My neighbor is one of those annoying wannabe YouTube personalities. Over the years I've seen him cough out cinnamon, lay flat on the hood of his car as it slowly creeps down the driveway and douse himself in lukewarm water, all while screaming epic win, epic fail, or epic maintenance of the status quo for all I know. It can get tiring to watch him go about these shenanigans in pursuit of viral fame. So, when he knocked on my door the other day and told me he was going to go away for a few weeks and had asked if I'd get his mail, honestly, it was a relief. I can't explain the peace of mind that I had knowing I didn't have to brace myself for anything stupid for a while. I was honestly afraid his stunts would wind up bleeding over into my life. Things were pretty normal for the first couple of days. He received a few bills, got some spam, and only what I can assume is a birthday card. Then, one evening, I got home to find a cardboard box waiting on his front porch, and big red letters was written, Return to Sender. I'm no small fry, but I admit I had trouble lifting the box on my own. It was really, really heavy. Lugging it across the road to my house was even harder, and I quickly realized there was no way I was going to drag it up these stairs through my front door. I decided I'd leave his package in my garage. It wasn't like I kept the car in there. The garage door was a piece of shit that refused to open without a good tug and a whack. It was less trouble than leaving the car in the driveway than it was to fight with the garage door every morning and night. In hindsight, I should have set the package down while I struggled to open the tricky door, but you know how it is when you got a good grip on something. There's no point in setting it down if you don't have to. It was as I kicked the door a third time that I lost my grip of the package. It fell and hit the ground, and I heard a light crack inside. <sighs> Shit. I cursed. I hoped I hadn't broken anything important. But I figure I won't tell my neighbor about it and just let him assume the break happened on my hands free. I managed to finally get the door unstuck and boy did it screech in protest when I rolled it over me. I dragged the box the rest of the way, setting it in the corner whenever my neighbor would come to claim it. I dragged the box the rest of the way, setting it in the corner for whenever my neighbor would come back to claim it. And then I forgot all about it. Until a few days passed, that is. I'm not sure exactly how long it took for the smell to waft into the crack under the garage house door, but it came in slow progression. It was a sick, sweet odor similar to a skunk, and for the first few days after I smelled it, I genuinely assumed that that's exactly what it was. Roadkill. It's just left his mark on the house. It was only when I realized that the scent was growing more and more intense instead of fading that I went looking for a source. That's when I opened the door. And that's when the odor knocked me back, holding my nose. The culprit wasn't hard to identify. The only change in my garage was the box in the corner. I remember thinking it must have been one of those meat-of-the-month subscription boxes. The mate must have gone rancid for being left out of the fridge for so long. How much could have been in that box to have been so large and heavy? An entire fucking cow? I covered my nose as I approached the box, a pair of scissors in my hands. I probably wouldn't have needed them to open because the box was soggy enough at the bottom to poke through with a finger, but I was not about to poke my finger into spoiled meat juice. That soggy bottom was the reason I had to open the box in the first place. If I tried to drag it out whole, everything would spill onto the floor. I was going to have to dump the pieces of meat one by one in a garbage bag at a time, and then take them down to the dumpster, a process I was not looking forward to. My scissors tore through the tape along the top of the cardboard box, and I thought the smell couldn't get any worse. But as I flipped the flaps open, I discovered a whole new gamut of stink. It was like opening a burning oven, but instead of a heat wave, I was met with waves of piss, sweat, and shit. Putrefication. It was so bad that I staggered back and had to force down the puke beginning to guzzle out of me. I don't think I could have handled the scent mingling with the horrors coming out of that box. And I'm ashamed to admit I ran out of the door for a breath of fresh air, but in the short time I'd spent in that garage, the smell had become so ingrained in the fabric of my clothes that it clung to me like a shadow. Nothing I tried could keep the smell out of my nostrils. Not air fresheners, not a face mask, not three showers or a change of clothes. Every second that box lay open in my garage was another second that the smell was allowed to foothold into my home. I had to bite the bullet. I returned to the garage, the flaps of the door still open and inviting me to look. I was prepared, with a clothespin pinning my nostrils shut the garbage bag in one hand and the strongest cleaner I could find in the other, and long rubber gloves to keep my skin from having to touch whatever was inside. But as it turns out, I needed none of these things. I wouldn't have to touch or clean the contents of the box, I would only have to suffer the nightmares every night. You see, there was meat in that box, but it didn't come from a cow or a pig, no. 
No, it was worse than that. It was my neighbor. Dead. Still in one piece, but dead. I called the cops and naturally they took me in for interrogation. It's kind of hard not to suspect the man with a corpse in a garage after all, but thankfully they soon realized I wasn't involved. My DNA might have been all over that box and the box might have left a mark throughout my house, but there was one piece of irrefutable evidence in my neighbor's own hands that proved my innocence. A vlogging camera. They showed me the footage only once. I'm not sure if they were allowed to or if they just felt bad for me and they figured it couldn't hurt. Either way, I saw it. My neighbor was sitting in the box outside of the shipping facility, laughing as he told the world how he was going to mail himself across state lines. He brought pee bottles, food, a pillow, a few flashlights. His friend, a guy that I've seen at his place several times to help with the stunts, closed the lid and presumably dropped him off at a shipment throughout the next couple of hours or days, uh, I'm not really sure. My neighbor recorded a few short clips about his progress, saying things like, I think I'm in the truck now, I can feel it moving. It must be in a warehouse, pretty warm in here. Still got plenty of food, that, that kind of stuff. And then, on the last entry, the box toppled over. He broke his neck, and that was it. The camera recorded until either the memory card got too full or the battery died. There's one thing I didn't tell the police after they showed me the video. One thing I heard in the footage that will haunt me until the day I die. Just after the tumble that broke his neck, I heard the familiar screeching of my garage door.